Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. I'm Eric Weber. In today's webinar, we will cover how to use CST Studio Suite to design and optimize a Bluetooth speaker antenna. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar where we'll cover CST Studio Suite and specifically talk about antenna design. Uh, my name is Eric Weber. I'm a senior applications engineer at Go Engineer, and with me is Frank Scharf. Um, he is with Dassault Systems and is the Samulia Technical Sales Director. Uh, so first, uh, Frank's going to kind of lead us off and uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, CST Studio Suite as as a whole. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Pleasure to be here. Wanted to say thank you to you and, and Go Engineer for uh, inviting me, giving me the opportunity here. Pleasure to be here. Um, so we're going to hear a little bit about <clears throat> uh, antenna simulation specifically today. Um, but to uh, give you a little bit of a heads up uh, or an introduction, I just want to, you know, climb to like thirty thousand feet first and give a, a broad overview. Uh, so if, if you recognize any of these questions on the slide here. Uh, will my product meet the technical specifications? Is my product power efficient? What impact will the choice of material have? How much heat uh, will be generated? If you recognize any of these, then you're in the right place and you need simulation software um, because cut and try doesn't really cut it anymore. Uh, it's too expensive. It takes too long. Um, uh, so uh, simulation software is the way to go. Uh, the simulation software that we're talking about today is called CST Studio Suite. Next slide, please. Um, and I have a few examples here of, oh, did we skip one? Um, there we go. Yeah, this one. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I have a few examples here of, um, you know, uh, applications that we can cover, and those are pretty close to what you're going to see today. So we can, the software can cover basically everything from a cell phone in its full complexity to a full aircraft. Um, and it can do all frequency ranges from electrostatics up to photonics uh, in the uh, nanometer free, uh, wavelength range. Um, we're well prepared to connect with all uh, common MCAT and ECAT tools, uh, especially, of course, uh, the uh, 3D experience platform. Um, and we can generate all of the uh, automated KPIs for you. Uh, again, what you see here are some more common applications, uh, antenna design, antenna placement, uh, cell phones in the high-tech area. But if you could go to the next slide, uh, then you can see that the software can take you to other applications as well. So we have on the left side, you see actually motor design. In the middle, we have coupled electronics cooling. On the right side, you see biological models. So we can actually study the effect of electromagnetic fields on the human body or on animal bodies. And this is a great help because it's very difficult to measure in a live body. Uh, so simulation makes that uh, a lot easier and uh, less painful. Um, Cosite interference is a big topic as well as flexible electronics. So if you have any of those topics uh, that are of interest to you, uh, we can also help you, um, but today um, I'm pleased uh, that Eric is going to talk about um, uh, the antenna design using CSD Studio Suite. Uh, however, I'll stick around in case there's any uh, follow-up questions on other applications later. So thanks again, and uh, enjoy the rest of this webinar. Thanks, Frank. Uh, so I'm going to jump back here to my presentation. And, you know, like, like Frank said, um, I'm going to focus on antenna design and, and just kind of go through a simple model um, and take you through the process um, using the tool Antenna Magus. Um, we'll we'll kind of find a shape, uh, an antenna shape that will work for us and estimate its performance. And then I'll also show how we can export uh, that antenna to a 3D model for CST Studio Suite. 
and then of course we'll import that and and run uh, run a simulation to see uh, you know just the antenna itself and uh, compare that to antenna magus to kind of see that we'll get uh, roughly the same results and then I'll I'll go in and I'll import um, some geometry from SolidWorks uh, to show you know additional structure around the antenna. Uh, and then finally, we'll, we'll optimize the performance. So there's a tool inside of CST Studio Suite for antenna design that allows us to switch different sizing parameters to optimize based on some goals that we set. So I will jump, I'll first jump over here to Antenna Magus. And, um, you know, here we, we kind of see the, the introductory page and, um, we can jump right into finding an antenna or doing an array layout or setting up a custom template. So templates are, uh, they define what, uh, what type of frequency band or, or bandwidth that we need. And, and these are typically specifications that you'd find um, from, um, you know, different government organizations. But we also have a built-in library of specifications that, you know, cover different industry verticals like aeronautical, automotive, um, radar bands, and then smart device and, and mobile communications um, and public broadcast as well. So I'm going to start out uh, by using, uh, using a uh, smart device and, and mobile com so I can just click on that now you see here this is further split into cellular GPS uh, WLAN uh, and, and those things but I'm going to uh, look at specifically a Bluetooth speaker um, antenna so I'm going to actually pick the personal area network and then you'll see here that we have, again, these built-in uh, specifications for, you know, different personal area networks. So I can just select this Bluetooth one here. And when I do that, um, it will kind of give me a few, you know, antenna uh, designs to, to work with. So that specification will sort of set these values here. So you know, you can see here in this case, it's just frequency bands, but you can see the minimum and, and maximum frequency where, where Bluetooth operates. So uh, this is in the 2.4 to 2.485 uh, gigahertz range. And then, you know, it, it will automatically apply that center frequency. So that's kind of what we're shooting for when we look at uh, our S parameters uh, to get, you know, a high gain at, at that frequency. Uh, we do have additional keywords that we can add. So the specification will add, you know, a few keywords here for us um, and will, you know, suggest different antenna templates. Um, here you can see we have 40, but, you know, out of the box we have uh, over, uh, over 300 um, well-defined and, and, and actually academically studied antenna shapes. Uh, and designs that we can use. So for example, if I, um, you know, search uh, something like compact, oh, we actually see that we've already used that one, but it, you know, if I, I start searching, it can, uh, you know, we're able to um, add some additional keywords that will filter out uh, our different antenna designs. Uh, so as I kind of scroll through some of these different options that it suggests, I can find one, you know, maybe that, that we're used to working with. Um, and I can actually select this. Now, if I click on the information tab here, you can see that this gives me, you know, a quick summary of, of what this shape of antenna is, is sort of designed for, um, where it operates the best. Uh, so you can see some typical values uh, for polarization, radiation pattern gain, um, and then minimum and maximum values as well that it, that it uh, estimates. Uh, there's some background information just, um, you know, discussing a little bit of, you know, a few of the characteristics on, on where these work well. Um, and then, of course, uh, a physical description and then also a feed method. Um, and... One of the other nice things is, is we can look at the performance and, and get a general idea 
of what, um, you know, in this case, the impedance looks like, the impedance curve, uh, and then also, you know, our, our S11 parameters here for the reflection coefficient. So you can see, you know, that, that this, um, this antenna has basically a one um, kind of operating frequency. And then we, we can also see the radiation characteristics of this as well. So looking at the, the, uh, the gain pattern um, at, at our center frequency, what that will look like for the far field. Uh, as well as looking at uh, polar plots to see the E-plane and, and H-plane um, gain patterns. And then another important thing is, are the references, okay? So I mentioned that these are academically researched antennas. So this library contains, you know, like I said, over um, 300 uh, antenna shapes, and these have been well-researched um, over several years and, you know, in published documents. So this is where a lot of, um, you know, a lot of these, in, uh, a lot of this information comes from. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, we, how we, how the software will sort of predict sizes for us and, and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, choose that antenna. And then what I'll do here is I'll just say add to collection. So this is going to, you know, bring this into uh, my, my design space. Um, and what you'll see is when we, when we, uh, select that, we, we get, you know, this top view and side view kind of showing what each per parameter, um, set controls. So if I kind of go down here, you'll see these are grayed out right now. Um, because again, this is the performance that it estimates, um, you know, that this is the size that it estimates will work, you know, best for the 2.443 gigahertz. Okay. Um, so we can we can get the overview. I can look at a 3D model preview, and we can kind of view, you know, what what that looks like, the substrate and and the antenna patch itself. Uh, and you know, we can uh, also um, you know look at the sketches and and you know additional information on this as well from here. So I'm going to go ahead and and just run this with the default. Notice that these are grayed out again. I I do need to. Um, um, tweak this in order to change these. So what I'm going to do is actually just estimate the performance right here off the bat. So uh, this this will take a, a minute or two just to, to run through this. Um, but a, as we're waiting for that, I just want to also point out that this information uh, down here on the bottom right will show us some design guidelines. So this, this um, you know, from that, those academically researched um, uh, from the academics, it it kind of gives us these guidelines, you know. So if you if you see here, kind of this first bullet, to in, to increase the resonant frequency, we want to decrease the patch diameter, or to decrease it, we want to increase the patch diameter, um, you know. And then saying in, increasing the substrate height will increase the bandwidth, and and so on. So there are guidelines that that will help us, you know, adjust these parameters to get something you know, to get kind of these initial uh, runs, uh, allow us to make those changes and, and get, you know, something that works for us. Uh, so once this is done, I just finished here, so I can jump to the estimated performance. And again, we can see the impedance curve here. Um, and, you know, a, a big one for us here is, is reflection coefficient as well. So, you know, here we can kind of see the curve and we'll notice that um, the the size was estimated to be a little a little small. So you know we see that the the frequency is operating above that 2.485. You can see here we're above you know 2.5 where that um, the the minimum reflection coefficient is. So we do have these values listed down here below, um, and then we can also see things like the bandwidth percentage, um, you know, and, and the different uh, uh, frequency values for where the the band starts and uh, and go and goes below the the negative ten decibels, uh, which is a common number we're looking at. So again, we can look at um, the total gain pattern on a polar plot, but we can also see this, you know, in in a three D view for that for the far field, um, for you know this this design and and this size. 
So now what I'll do, um, so because, you know, our, our frequency is a little bit high here, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to do a new tweak. And when I do a new tweak, what it will do is, is allow me to kind of change uh, these dimensions here. So if we want to lower that frequency, we want to increase the, the diameter of our patch. So I'm just going to uh, put in 49.55 is, is a pretty good estimate here. Uh, and then I can, you know, click estimate performance and we could wait for it again. Um, but the, you know, when, when we run several of these, you can kind of see that it, it populates this value comparison. So you can see, okay, design one, the, the initial one we got was 49.44. And now you can see I've set the tweak to uh, 49.55. But we can change, you know, several of these um, dimensions, uh, just keeping it simple here. We But we can um, change several of these dimensions and kind of change, um, you know, our, our different parameters and, and gain patterns. Um, so I'm actually just going to jump back to, to my slides here and you can see, um, you know, when we run this, uh, you can see that I did a, a few different tweaks. So again, this 49.55, that, that's our green one here. And you can see that that moves it slightly in the right direction, but we do need, you know, something higher, uh, a, a larger patch in order to, to move that further. Um, to the frequency uh, that we want. So, you know, I, I adjusted the 49.8 um, to get to get that uh, that value. Okay, and again, we, we get we, we can compare these on those charts. We can compare, you know, in this case, I'm showing the reflection coefficient, but we can compare these in the charts and actually get discrete values to to look at here as well. Um, so now that we found something that, that works for us, we can just jump back to Antenna Magus and I'll show, you know, how we can export this now to, uh, and I'll actually start with 49.8 now. Um, so I'm just going to show that we can uh, export this, our current, um, you know, our current design by using this model export. Uh, so when we do this, um, we are able to, you know, choose CST Studio Suite, and I'm all I need to do is just export the model. So here it shows the different parameters that that Antenna Megas came up with, and these will become parameters on the C CST Studio Suite side um, that we can use for optimization, which we'll kind of see here at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and export the model, um, and we'll just call this, you know, BT. Bluetooth and I can hit save. Okay. So <clears throat> now if I jump over to CST Studio Suite, you'll see here that, you know, again, this is kind of that, that introduction page and I can just simply open up that, um, that uh, simulation file that, that we brought in and um, you'll see, you know, we, we get our, uh, we get our, our model here. So we, we basically have our 3d model, um, and, and these components are kind of split up into, you know, the feed line, um, the, the patch, and then there's, there's a saw, there's a plane here on the bottom and then the substrate itself. So we have, you know, what we'd call in SOLIDWORKS, a multi-body part or, um, you know, different geometry pieces that we can create, um, utilize and, and assign different material properties to. Uh, <clears throat> so what I'll do, uh, or at this point, I could just go ahead and start the simulation. Um, you know, again, these, these parameters are set to the, the same values that, that we had in Antenna Mega. So, you know, before making any edits, I could start the simulation and, you know, we can take a look at at what those results are. So again, this, these take about five minutes to run. Um, so I'm just going to, again, just jump over um, to this slide here and you can see now this is just my antenna only. I don't, I haven't added any geometry, but you can see here again, our, our reflection coefficient is, is again near that, that uh, frequency band that we want to have it, you know, minimized to. And then of course we have our far field pattern, um, for this as well. 
So now what I want to do is we'll, I'll actually show how we can import um, geometry. Now there are tools, there are modeling tools here in CST Studio um, that we can use to add additional geometry. Um, you know, so I can create things like a brick or a sphere or a cone, uh, cylinders, and, and we can even draw, you know, 2D sketches and, and extrude those and, and uh, or sweep those to get, you know, more complex shapes. Uh, but what I'm going to do is, is just show the import and export. So if here, if I import this, you can see we, we can, you know, import different types of files. Um, and, you know, the, the one here that I want to import is, is a SOLIDWORKS file, so I can just go to the 3D CAD parametric and import this. Uh, <clears throat> so as this um, pulls up here, uh, you know, we, like I said, we, we do have many different file types, so th neutral file formats like step file, or, uh, yeah, step files and, and parasolid files can be used uh, as well. Uh, <clears throat> so just waiting for my window here. So there it is. So I can now just go out and browse to my uh, speaker housing uh, file. And then I want to make sure that I scale this to the current unit. So depending on, you know, what units you had in your SOLIDWORKS file, you want to just make sure that um, we, we scale this properly so it, it shows up for us or it comes in with the right unit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit scale and then hit OK again here and, and this will bring in the geometry. Okay, so there it is, and it's and it's uh, been brought in. So you know this comes in as a different component, and then of course there's there's some subset of components. So here we have like a battery, and then the speaker cone itself, and then you know kind of a mesh screen on top. Uh, although we we have it modeled as a solid, and then sort of the base, you know that that would be made of plastic. Um, so one thing to just point out is is kind of the substrate is is running into this component. So you know obviously we need to adjust where uh, we need to adjust where the antenna is. So what I'm going to do is is uh, just kind of move uh, this component over using a transform. Uh, so again we can uh, use the modeling capability here at CST Studio, and I can do a transform of negative 30 millimeters to uh, translate that over. Now I get this, um, this warning here uh, that, that basically says that we have a shape, in, uh, shape intersection, so I'm just going to hit none here and, because that would just merge uh, those, those bodies into each other. So now what we see, you know, if, if we look at our, our substrate again, you know, notice that we've moved that over, we've moved it away from, from this component over here and um, but with that, we, we also um, kind of intersected this. So what we need to do is actually um, cut this and, and you know, uh, change the shape of our substrate here. So I'm just going to come in and um, pick some edges. So I'll pick that edge and that edge there. And then I'm just going to do a blend. So blend... Um, you know, we'll do a radius of 50. So this is, you know, what we call a fillet in, in uh, SolidWorks. And then I also need to get this, this plane down here. So again, I can pick these edges, very thin edges here. And then I can just do the same blend there. All right, so now you see something that, that fits in the housing. Um, but we've now kind of sh changed the shape of, of our antenna. Um, so what we need to do is, you know, kind of rerun this and, and get an idea of what, uh, what our results are. So I already see I'm running, <laughs> running up on, on the time. So what I'll do is I'll just show you real quick that we can, you know, we can apply materials and, and that's what would be required when we import. We need to apply a material to this. 
Um, so the materials, when we, when we bring something in, um, you know, the, the antenna patch in, in the feed line come in as a, uh, perfect conductors and then the substrate has its own material. So there is a material library. Um, now if we want to add our own materials, we can, we can say assign material. I can look in the material library. So if I do that, you know, you can see that the library is pretty extensive for, um, you know, different uh, materials that would be commonly found um, in antennas and, and circuit boards. Um, and, you know, we can also search this. So, you know, if I want like uh, polypropylene, you can see that uh, nothing shows up here. So what we can do is actually um, create a custom material real quick. Um, and I can call this PP. And then the the uh, the coefficient that I'm uh, I'm interested in here to to kind of control you know what that far field looks like is going to be the permittivity, um, which is this epsilon value. So I can change that to 2.1 and and hit OK. So you know that will assign uh, this material to this component. Now I could do that for the other components and then run it, but. We're running short on time here, so I'll quickly just jump back to my PowerPoint and kind of show you the, the differences and results. So, you know, here you can see my antenna only. Uh, and then if I go to the one with the antenna and the housing, you see, you know, we get, um, we kind of, again, move this a little bit um, over to the right uh, to a, a higher frequency. Um, again, not quite in that 2.485 uh, range. So the next thing I'm, I'm going to do is, is just show you how to now use the optimization tool. Uh, so the optim optimization tool is pretty straightforward as well. Um, I just go into the optimizer and again, when we import from Antenna Magus or even if we import uh, uh, SolidWorks components, we can, we can set up um, to have those parameters import as well. So, you know, sketch dimensions and things like that can also be set up as parameters so they show up on import. Um, so in this case, I just want to, um, you know, adjust my patch diameter um, and, and then we can kind of give it a min and max range for it to, to, for it to size itself. So I can say, you know, 44.5 to 52, for example. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, the goals are, are what is going to drive and, and basically finish the solve for us. So we want to bring that S parameter to the, you know, to that center frequency of, of the Bluetooth uh, range. So I can uh, just say move min and, and we'll set this value to the 2.4425, which is right in the middle of 2.4 and 2.485. All right, so then I, I just click OK, and then at this point, I can hit the Start button, and, and what happens is this thing will run this simulation um, and, you know, get results, and then it will, you know, try another size, get results, try another size until it um, moves and, and finds to where that minimum was at our 2.4425. So again, um, jumping back here, I do have a, an example um, of, of just a few of the results. It actually ran more than four studies, but uh, I just uh, chose these uh, specific ones here. So you can see, you know, our original, the 49.8, that was our original design, you know, and then it, it runs um, something smaller, the 40, 45.5, and, and notice that that went, you know, much higher, and then it ran a 47.8. And then finally, it, it ran, you know, it lowered that, or increased the patch diameter and brought it over, you know, right to where our uh, 2.4425 um, is, okay? So it did move it over in this case. And, and of course, we can get, you know, once we um, have it designed where our, uh, you know, where our S parameters are, are at that operating frequency, we can see that we have, you know, enough um, gain here. And you know, this is, this is one way we can optimize this. Now, there are many, many other results that we can look at, um, and, and I'm kind of running out of time. So uh, we'll, uh, we can, you know, look at a lot of other different uh, results 
as well. But you know, today I was just kind of focusing on these things, the far field and the and the S parameters, to to kind of show how we can, you know, make changes and, and use that optimization tool. Uh, so with that said, yeah, it looks like we've been going for about a half hour here. So I wanted to kind of stop. It looks like um, it looks like everyone or it looks like there are a couple of questions um, that that showed up here. Um, so one of the the first question I see here is, can we comment on CST and, and the SolidWorks or SolidWorks integration related to third party software add-ins such as HF Works? So Frank, <laughs> I might pass that one over to you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you use CST Studio Suite, then you have no need for HF Works. Um, yeah, so the, go ahead. Yeah, um, I mean, the, uh, the uh, it, it, CST Studio Suite is a separate tool, but it does uh, connect to SolidWorks and it, it creates a link. So when you open a SolidWorks model, it will automatically open at the same time in SolidWorks and in CSC Studio Suite. And like you said, Eric, the parameters are connected. So that way, when you make a change in one model, it's going to update the other. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was one other question. So what is involved in testing antenna performance with different uh, antenna materials? So I think, you know, I I kind of showed that you know, when we have all of this geometry brought in, um, you know, we we can either create custom materials or use materials out of the library to define the proper coefficients. Now, again, this is just a very small subset of what CST Studio Suite can do. You know, Frank mentioned that we can do things like thermal studies um, and and look at stuff on on circuit boards, for example. And you know, when you have materials. The, the material coefficients for those things like thermal conductivity and, and you know expansion uh, the the thermal expansion coefficients those things can also be defined in the materials I just <laughs> didn't didn't show that but that that stuff is there as well so that looks like uh, all we had for questions for now but uh, I just want to thanks everyone uh, thank everyone and you know let everyone know that um, you know, you, you can always reach out to us um, through our, you know, our, our normal channels. So, of course, you can go and, and sign up for our newsletter um, at goengineer.com slash sign up. Um, check, out us, check out our YouTube channel. We'll, we'll get this um, webinar recording up on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, and then, you know, obviously you can, you can reach out to us um, in, in all the different social platforms as well. So, um, so yeah, I guess uh, that's it for now. And, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to follow up on, uh, on, on any of those channels and, and we'll uh, do our best to answer those. So thank you everyone for joining us and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this webinar, please subscribe and leave us a comment below if you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future video. Visit our website, goengineer.com, for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource.